Continuing our exploration of the Salibri user interface, let's take a look at sectioning now. I'm going to close the section basket window. I'm going to return our view to show all. And I'm going to start the sectioning tool. Now remember, to create sections, you have to click the, uh, the second drop-down in the upper right toolbar and switch over to sectioning mode, which is also zero on the keypad. Once you're in sectioning mode, the first thing you'll need to do is click on a surface within the model to define your first plane. So in this case, I'm just going to click on the front wall of this facade. So you'll see that at first we create a semi-transparent plane. And to adjust the plane, remember we have to hold the shift key. So for the first example, I'm going to hold the shift key and click and drag with the mouse button. I'm pushing back towards the model, and that moves the section plane. If I release the section key, I go return back to my navigational mode. So pressing the mouse key without the shift is my regular default spin mode. Now, if I want to hide the section mode, I'm going to hit the T button on the keypad. Now, remember, you have to remain in the sectioning mode to use all these commands. So if I press T, it hides, press T again, and it shows the section plane. T hides it, T shows it. Now if I want to create an additional section plane, let's say I want to cut this from the top as well as from the side. Remember I have to remain in my sectioning mode. I'm just going to click a new surface and it highlights it. Now to move that surface, it's useful to turn the, the section planes back on again. So I'm going to press T, again remaining in sectioning mode, and then I can just click somewhere in the open space to make sure that I have just that plane selected, hold shift, and drag the mouse down. Now again, letting go of the shift key, I'm back in my navigation mode. Another way to, to uh, move the section plane is to hold shift and use the greater than, less than buttons on the keypad. I'm pressing the, the greater than, less than keys. You can even hold it down and it will move it a little bit more gradually. This is useful to give you a little bit more finite control if you want to just highlight below a, um, the bottom of a structural slab, for example and expose the ceiling sandwich just below the floor slab. It's a little easier to do with the keys than it is with the mouse. Once again, press T to hide the section planes. Now remember, all of the sectioning tools can be customized by returning to the File tab and clicking on Settings. Click on Sectioning, and you can change the line color if you'd like. If you'd like to use a different color, let's say red, and you can change the line thickness if you'd like a thinner uh, display of that in, in, uh, in your sectioning mode. One last tip that's a fun thing to use is uh, to assign very quickly a section box around one particular floor in your building. Now to delete section planes, we want to return this to an original view. You can, If you want to delete one section plane at a time, Remember, you have to remain in sectioning mode. Let's turn on the section planes, and you can click on one of them and just hit the delete key to delete the section plane. Another way of doing this is turning on the show all button. Okay, so let's go back to our the way we had it before. Create a section plane, move it into the building, and I'm gonna pick on one particular floor and turn off the section plane with the T key. I'm going to switch out of sectioning mode. That's very important when you want to go back and select an element. So you can either be in info or select. Select a floor slab. Right click on that floor slab and from the context menu pick sectioning. Sections above and below floor. So if you're dealing with a much larger, much more complex model, this is useful in isolating one particular floor. Once you're in this mode, it's, it's no different than any other sectioning mode. So if you want to adjust the planes, you have to return to sectioning mode by selecting the dropdown or pressing zero on the keypad. Once you go to this mode, you'll notice that there are multiple selection planes um, activated in the view.
once you have that those sections created you can go select one of the planes and move them up and down with your usual methods shift greater than less than or shift mouse button and once again click show all to return to the main model now let's examine footprint controls these are useful tools in navigating through your model uh, something that in a tool like Navisworks you have to create uh, the grids and, and the plans to, to give you some three-dimensional indicators of where the grid lines are. Later versions of the tool added that ability in, but they're, uh, they become part of a dynamic interface within Celebri that builds plan representations and gives you room data on the fly. So to turn on footprint controls, you're going to go up here to the upper right and click on this small icon just to the left of the window controls. Once you have your footprint controls activated, you have three buttons that are immediately uh, below the footprint toggle, and those control grids, plans. The plans will show a little bit later when we get into uh, sectioning mode. This is actually more useful when you're doing uh, 3D coordination review, when you're isolating particular parts of the structural system and the mechanical system, instead of having the architectural model turned on, you can just have a simple 2D representation of the most uh, logical and appropriate floor plan. And lastly, the, the top, the very top one, it gives you your room name and number information. These sliders here, there are two sliders, and these control where you want the plane to be cut. You can slide the top one to cut from the top down. You can see that some of the grids are appearing and disappearing based on the cut plane within the model. And the, the second slider cuts from the bottom up. So this just gives you a, a better indication of which floor you're on and where you want to show a particular two-dimensional aspect of your model. So let's combine showing grid lines with sectioning to expose some of the uh, information inside. So I'm still in my sectioning mode here up in the top of the of the view, 3D view window. I'm going to click the roof plane to create a uh, horizontal section. Hold down the shift key and drag the mouse down to expose the plane. I'm going to press T on the keyboard to hide the section. And then if we orbit and look inside, we can see that we have room name and numbers. Now these are not using Revit room tags, these are just dynamically created based on the data that's inside the model. So if we toggle ABC on that footprints control, you can see that the room name and number appear and disappear. And they'll dynamically size based on uh, the, the, the available space that you have to show. Now if we want to illustrate the two-dimensional uh, floor plates, it's easy easiest to turn off the architectural model. So let's return to the model tree, switch back to the containment method, select architecture, and click the minus sign to remove it from the selection basket. Maybe we can even take floor slabs out of the structural model. And so we're going to switch back over to systems, find slabs, and remove them as well. So as we navigate around, you'll see that you'll, you'll still have a two-dimensional representation of the floor plates that we can, I'm going to drop down the lower one to show the, the ground floor as well. So you'll see that you have many different ways to navigate and inspect your model with or without the architecture. You don't have to worry too much about making architecture transparent when you have a simple and dynamic 2D representation as a footprint in Celebri. You also have this very basic navigation window, I like to call this my map or my compass, that gives you a floor plan of where you, you are at any given point. This is quite useful when you're using the walk mode and you're walking through interior spaces. Let's give that a try. I'm going to go into walk mode and drop myself down a little bit. And let's begin a walk through the space using the arrow keys. Now one, one important thing to know about when you're walking around is that Celebri is an intelligent model data. What that means is that when you're walking around with the architectural model turned on, it won't, it won't allow you to walk through walls, but it will allow you to walk through doors. Any kind of an opening or a door in which there's a solid piece 
you can still walk through it because it allows you, it knows that it's some kind of a portal through which you can, you can walk. So as we're walking through this model, you'll see that there's a small arrow indicating on the plan where you are. Now you can actually use this plan and double click in it to go to a different spot in the model. So if you know that you just want to switch over to one of these rooms in the back and you, you're not sure how to walk there, you can very quickly double click on that space and you're in that space. Let's turn the architecture model back on and see what that really means. Let's take clinic A, click plus to add that to the selection basket, and now we're inside of a space. We're seeing the mechanical stuff, but the structural slabs are still hidden. Let's jump over to this space in the plan, and here we are navigating inside of that space. Notice that as I approach a wall, it won't let me go through a wall, but it will let me go through a door. And the last part that you should uh, be familiar with in terms of navigating through your model are the quick show hide tools up in the uh, ribbon at the very top of your 3D view window. These can be found right here at the very right of the, um, I, I, I like to call it the cubes. Um, these are your show all, hide, or make transparent. There's a little paint tool here that allows you to paint different materials. We don't use that that often as we're just using Salibri for 3D coordination. But these are useful in terms of very quickly showing and hiding basic parts of your model. This is not a comprehensive list of all the parts of your model, just the most commonly things that you would like to turn on and turn off. For example, in this interior view or in the model, instead of uh, finding ceilings um, to turn on and turn off, we can just use this tool and say show hide suspended ceiling. Keyboard shortcut for that is also Alt C. So we can get a quick look at what's above the ceiling plane. We can hit Alt C to turn that on and toggle it on and off. We can take the walls, for example, and, and click Alt W to turn the walls on and off. And spaces are often another thing that you're getting three-dimensional space that will seem like transparent blobs within your model. And you can turn spaces on and off with Alt-S. That just gives you a little bit of a clearer view into your model. Once again, Alt-C for ceilings, Alt-W for walls. 